Hello everyone, welcome to this video and in this video I'm going to be talking about the nuances of the deep web or the dark net and basically what are the differences between um, between the deep web and the uh, and the clear web really. So basically on the deep web uh, some of the I think the, the most important difference is the fact that the addresses on the deep web the URLs on the deep web are in onion formats. Now I can basically show you that by um, going to the hidden wiki um, wiki the hidden wiki let me just search for that you can do it too and basically uh, the, the simple fact is that the URLs end with a dot onion uh, a, a dot onion extension and I'm gonna show you that right now like for example duckduckgo.com is an example of a clear web website that ends in a dot com dot net or a dot org those are basically simple uh, th these are basically clear an example of uh, how uh, URLs appear on the clear web and on the deep web and or the dark net for that matter the URLs will appear slightly differently uh, let me just try and open uh, the hidden wiki it's taking quite a bit of time uh, let me just uh, let me just uh, check on this other site now uh, while that is loading I want to actually also tell you that when searching the the dark net especially the search engines like google um uh, google uh, bing and maybe a, a few others that you may be using uh, i don't know whether wh why you would not be using anything but google but google will not work and will not index anything uh, anything really important from that you'll not index anything from the dark net it's only going to index all the stuff from the the clear web so basically, uh, in, the, in the next videos, I'm actually going to be showing you some really good deep web or dark net search engines that will basically index uh, all the websites on the dark net and give you some very good results. Now back to what I'm, I was explaining you, you guys about the, um, the extension or the URL extension. So here are examples of um, uh, web websites, uh, website URLs on the deep web. So you basically have the HTTP. Uh, colon forward slash and then the name of the website in a in a code format so you re you'll not find a website with the name uh, right there but uh, uh, an idea uh, uh, basically a combination of of letters will be given that will make sense to the in to the title of the website but i'll get into that later now as you can see it's a dot onion and if i just open this in a new tab right here let's see whether some of these sites actually work so basically site discontinued due to bad use all right let's try and open something else uh, we can try the torch uh, search engine which is not the best i will be uh, re reviewing others all right so basically this is an example of a good uh, search engine not the best that can basically index websites on the dark net or the deep web so uh, let's basically search for um let's see let's see ebooks let's see what site it's going to return so as you can see it's going to return archive of ebooks print ready you have a uh, Marxist uh, internet archive of ebook collection. You have, um, you have some uh, forum returns here. So overall, a good, op a very good search engine, uh, but it's not the best. I'll be getting into others soon. So yeah, that's basically it for this video, guys. Uh, this video is basically just explaining the nuances of the deep web and what's different from what you'd, uh, you maybe you are expecting, uh, uh, you're expecting to find or on basic functionality. But that's it for this video. Uh, if you found this, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. Hello everyone and welcome to this section. And in this section, we're basically going to be looking at Tor and some of its security features and just going over the interface. So you could have installed Tor on Windows or you could be using it on Cubes or you could be using it on Tails or finally you could be using it on any uh, Linux distro of your choice. I'm going to be using Ubuntu and uh, basically if you already extracted the package as we did in the previous um, section of this course, uh, you should have already started Tor and uh, here we are. Tor is actually uh, opened and uh, I know that it's connected to the Tor network. Now let's actually get started. So Tor browser has a lot of security features that uh, probably uh, a lot of people overlook, but let's actually uh, get uh, in into them. So. If you maximize the, the Tor browser, it's going to tell you that the Tor browser can allow websites to determine your monitor size, which can be used to track you. 
So we recommend that you leave your Tor browser windows in their original default size. Well, that's actually a precaution that actually makes sense because uh, obviously if you visit a website, it has to basically um, form the website to your the, the the device that you're using, the resolution of the device that you're using, which you see very commonly nowadays, if you visit a website on your mobile device, it will basically contort to the resolution of the mobile device. So basically, one of the, the first precautions you should take is basically making sure that you don't maximize your browser's uh, resolution. And it just makes it a, a whole lot easier for them to understand what device you're using. And from there, they can basically begin targeting you and, and all of that really. It's all uh, got to do with uh, security and uh, an anonymity. Now, uh, most of you have already noticed that this really isn't... Um, a, a very normal browser and as you can see it, it's uh, if you go to this little onion icon here it's going to say uh, tor is enabled now uh, when if you click on it, it's going to say new identity a new tor circuit for this site and uh, it's going to say security settings and the tor network settings now we, we basically want to hit a uh, new identity all right and what if we hit new identity it's basically going to start a new tor window now, we can either do that or we can just start from here. So I'm going to hit no. Now, let's try and visit a website like google.com, right? And let's see what what it pops up. I already know that it's connected to the Tor network. All we, are, all we have to see is uh, what it basically replies. So, uh, according to what it's got uh, from the Tor network, the IP that it's using is uh, a, a Dutch IP from the Netherlands. And uh, therefore, it's changed it to or all to Dutch. So in reality, I don't live in a, the, the Netherlands, so I can vouch that it's working. And uh, if you click on the onion right now, it's basically going to show you the Tor circuit that's being used. So it's going to say this browser. And as we learned in the first section, how nodes work in the Tor connection is going to go to the first node. The first node is going to basically select the second node and then it's going to select the third node and then finally it's going to connect to the internet so it's basically showing you the the chain of node connections that your browser is taking to finally access the internet which is why you'll find that sometimes that the connection is slightly slower again you can create a new identity and what that means is that it's going to give you a new ip address all right so we basically know that it's uh it's using uh, the uh, a dutch ip address Let's try a website like, um, oops, uh, sorry, I think I closed the window. Let's open Tor Browser again and uh, and let's just connect uh, it to the Tor circuit. Sorry about that. I think I closed the window. So uh, actually, it probably has created a new identity for us. So let's open YouTube, um, youtube.com and let's see what it gives us. So uh, in theory, uh, I don't know what uh, IP address it's given me now, but let's see what it's given us. So basically, it's still using the, I think, the, the Dutch IP address. And uh, possibly it's going to continue using that uh, for right now. Anyway, what I was getting to was basically how uh, how it's uh, it's basically structured, structured the web page and how you can customize uh, the activity on the page. So... As I was saying, you can get into security settings and uh, right now the security settings are set to low. That means it's basically going to work like a normal browser and it's not going to restrict anything really. Uh, let me just minimize this ad. Now, if I hit medium, all right, at this level, the following changes apply. All right, it's JavaScript is disabled by default on non HTTPS sites. So uh, YouTube is a HTTPS site, so that means it's still going to be enabled. Uh, HTML5 video and audio media become click to play via no script. So they'll not auto play any videos. Uh, so basically on sites where JavaScript is enabled, performance optimizations are disabled. So basically when it's at medium, it's going to restrict a bit of scripts running on the website. For example, if I clicked one of these videos right here, a lot of live stuff is playing. Uh, let me just click a video that might not uh, be too controversial in terms of content uh, let's just go to trending and let's see what the differences are uh, in terms of how it's played so uh, let's uh, let, let's try this video right here and as you can see it'll still play the video 
it'll still play the video quite well and nothing really has changed so if we go back into the security settings and we set it to high uh, let's hit ok and uh, uh, not now let's refuse that and let's reload the web page and let's see what it gives us now so it's uh, nothing really has changed in, in terms of the interface everything is still smooth uh, so let's uh, try and uh, open a video right now and as you can see this little icon has turned into a no scripts sign and uh, most probably it's not going to play the video and as you can see it's not going to play the video at all it's not giving us any thumbnails so let's go back to the home screen and let me explain what uh, the high security um, level actually means. So at this security level, the following changes apply. Mouse over the four details. So basically, it's not going to give you any preview of the content. Like, for example, if I click here, uh, it's, uh, you, you can basically see that it doesn't. On sites where JavaScript is enabled, performance optimizations are disabled. So in reality, the a lot of the scripts are disabled so let's hit ok and now if we look over here it's going to say this is basically your script area and it's going to ask you to it has this area for blocked script and it's going to as you can see it's it's, it's uh, temporarily allowed the font to work but it's uh, it's it's disabled uh, other scripts as well now you can temporarily allow the scripts on this page if you're if you know you're on a website that you can trust however it's it's always go, it's gonna it's actually it's gonna advise you that allowing the scripts globally or uh, universally across the the Tor browser is very dangerous, and that's because some websites may use JavaScript, and you know JavaScript uses your computer to f perform advanced tasks on the websites like calculations, and those can be really dangerous, especially when harvesting information from your browser and your computer. So that's basically the security features. You then have your Tor network settings. All right. So these are very simple and it's basically the first settings that you get when installing the Tor browser. You can basically basically check that uh, whether or not your internet service provider blocks connections to the Tor network in countries where that may be restricted, uh, whether you have a proxy or you're going through a firewall. So that's really up to you. Coming back to, um, let, let me just go back to YouTube. Sorry about that. Coming back to the the new talk, uh, if you focus on the Tor circuit for this site, as I said, it's going to show you a, a visual representation according to, to the, the chain of nodes being used. Now, if you go into uh, the security settings, and uh, if we were to basically say uh, medium and um, or low, what would be really dangerous if is if I went to if I used a search engine, by the way, the Tor browser automatically uses uh, the DuckDuckDo, uh, the DuckDuckGo search engine, which is an anonymous uh, search engine. So basically, as you can see, the default search engine is DuckDuckGo. So let me just search for the hidden wiki, which is basically a wiki that uh, contains a, a collection of a few onion sites. So generally speaking, the first thing you'll realize is that the deep web or the dark web net, we're actually not yet browsing the dark net, is um, relatively slower because it's going through a, a certain amount of proxies. So the hidden wiki, as it says, as I said, it's going to be using the DuckDuckGo search engine. The DuckDuckGo search engine is, I think, the best search engine because it, it's anonymous and does not track any of your search queries. So uh, let's open the hidden wiki. And uh, let's try and actually visit a uh, a deep web site right now or a dark net site. So basically, this is just a collection of dot onion websites, which is the URL format for the deep web. Uh, for most of you who don't know, it does not end in dot com or dot org dot dot net. Really, the in terms of the deep web or the dark net, all websites end in a dot onion format. So if I was to just find a website on the hidden wiki, you can try this for yourselves. Um, most of the websites will not work, but if you can find one that works, uh, it'll be a good starting point for you to understand how this works. So I'm basically going to try and click on a, on a link that may not be, um, that may be working. For example, this market, this market website that may be dealing in firearms. 
you have a lot of illegal uh, or illegal content right here which again i as i mentioned in my disclaimer i'm not going to be responsible for if you get involved into this but anyway um let me try and find links that are working as i said one of the the most common problems you'll be encountering on the deep web is the fact that links don't actually work and some of them will be dead so the real challenge or the adventure is finding uh, links that are working so let's actually try and find a website that's working so that we can uh, i can basically show you how it works uh, before we end this video oh, no site wants to work today uh, let's try the twitter clone <coughs> Excuse me. None of those sites want to work. Um, let's try a hacking website right here. It also contains a few torrent websites, which, by the way, another tip is I would not recommend you uh, to basically torrent over the deep web because that'll basically just give out your location. I will get to uh, in, I will get to in advanced anonymity settings and configuring basically giving you full anonymity where you, 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 it cannot be traced back to you. But that's coming in the future videos. So we've actually got uh, for our first deep web website. And as you can see, uh, this is an ebook website called the Imperial Library. And uh, it's saying there are 103,448 uh, books on the library. So you can basically just check this out. And uh, let's check out science fiction, for example. You have Star Trek. You can download it or read it. Again, this may be illegal, and I don't encourage you to do that. But at the end of the day, you can use, uh, you can use this information to do whatever you want. So that's basically it for this uh, video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hey guys, welcome to this video and in this video I have a very very fun and exciting video uh, for you guys. Uh, basically we're going to be looking at the best uh, deep webs or dark net search engines out there. So basically I've I've got about four that I think are the best uh, search engines that you can get. Uh, one of them that you might want to include is DuckDuckGo, but it's not the best for the deep uh, for the deep web or the dark net. Now the first one I'm going to start with is uh, Amir or AHMIA, I don't know how you can pronounce it, but basically this is my personal favorite because of how many results it uh, turns up. So let's say I want to search about, um, let's say, uh, let's say a conspiracy theory. So let me just, let me just type a conspiracy theory. Let's just search a very, very simple, a generic. And as you can see, it's going to give uh, it's going to give the thing I like is it's very well designed. It it basically has a very clean user interface. It displays the results in 0 0.05 seconds. All right. Uh, it has statistics. It has you can basically use an I2P search, which um, which you really don't need to know what uh, it is right now. Um, it basically then indexes them according to uh, to their relevancy and whether or not they are online and uh, um, uh, basically how old they are as you know and as i've mentioned in previous videos uh, basically sites on the deep web will usually find sites that most of the sites will not work and are not active and if you are uh, the, the real challenge is finding sites that are active so let's try the first one and let's see what we can get out of this one just to show that the results are indeed uh, active and the sites that you'll find through this search engine are the best so uh, basically we have the sports conspiracy brainwashed from birth uh, by Dr. Marcus Driver. Well, there's some pretty interesting stuff here. Nothing is so permeating in American culture as sports. We are exposed to competition based on physical struggles for dominance. AK Athletics. Uh, well, I'm really not going to go into any of this. But basically, this has been Amaya or Amia, whatever you want to call it. And uh, this is a very, very good search engine that I would recommend really. I would really uh, highly recommend this search engine. The second one on my list is Candle. Now, Candle is a very minimalistic um, search engine. As you can see, it's, it's basically uh, got inspiration from Google. And that's why it's using the different the Google color scheme. And it basically has a tagline saying no parentheses, no Boolean operators, no quotes, just words. So it's basically telling you to just search for whatever you want to you want to get. So uh, let's try and search for um, let's try again and search for conspiracy uh, 
theory, conspiracy theory, and let's see what it uh, returns. All right, so you can see it basically giving, it's basically giving different, uh, different results. As you can see on this one, we got different results. And on candle, we got uh, different results. So as you can see, there are some differences. And it's going to basically show results. Uh, it's showing 20 out of 69 of 97 of 204. So basically, it's indexed by in pages. Now, talking about the way it displays it, it's a, it has a back, uh, it has a black theme. So that's very nice on and easy on the eyes. It also gives a description. It gives a nice description and uh, has it basically has a, an index as to when uh, the, the site was was up so this is very very nice because it actually gives the latest sites uh, as compared to amaya that gives that sorts by relevance but candle will sort by by time um, by time that it was updated or activated so let's click on this and let's see what we get and hopefully this link is still up or it has uh, actually has uh, had some downtime all right so it's basically forwarded us to intel exchange where we have some uh, conspiracy theory um, forum right here Intel Exchange, by the way, is a very, very popular forum on the deep web. I will make a separate video on Intel Exchange because it's a really, really good uh, forum for you to basically express how you feel, really. Um, but that's basically um, Candle. So Candle uh, is a very, very good um, search engine. And by the way, this all comes down to personal preference, really. Everything is up to you and uh, whatever you deem comfortable for yourself. The third one is Not, not Evil. Uh, basically, not evil uh, is a very simplistic search engine uh, that basically gives you uh, the ability to index whatever you're searching in terms of titles, URLs, or you can use both. All right, so uh, you can basically uh, search uh, for for uh, keywords. So I'm going to basically search for conspiracy theory. I'm just going to be using this just to show the differences between the two set, the three or uh, and other search engines that we're going to get to in a few moments. So I'm going to make sure it's uh, it's, it's using uh, titles and I'm going to search and let's see what results it uh, turns up for us. All right. So as you can see, there's, there's some stuff that's kind of different here and uh, uh, you'll find something. Maybe we have something here in Russian and uh, this uh, the, basically it's a, it doesn't, um, my, in my opinion, it doesn't sort everything in a very neat way or an intuitive way that uh, people are accustomed to, especially when it comes to search engines. That would probably be the, the only down, uh, the only thing down about this uh, search engine. Um, it's called Not Evil. So let's actually try and open this link right here and let's see what it uh, gives us. It's uh, in Russian, so I'm guessing it's going to be in Russian opening an onion site it does give uh, a last response date that means when it was last uh, pinged active uh, let's see what it gives us here it's taking quite a while to load probably a big page all right so yeah as i said this is a russian website and it looks like a it looks like it's a download website for i think a film or something so really nothing as you can see they give varied results and it, again it all comes down to what search engine will give you what you want. So that's basically it for not evil. By the way, the links will be attached to a uh, to a to a resource folder in 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 this section so you can basically check these links and uh, see them for yourselves. Uh, now going on to the fourth uh, search engine is Grams. Now Grams is basically a search engine that will allow you to search the dark web markets. Now I will. I'm the next video is probably going to be about the dark web or the deep web markets, and this will basically allow you to index all of them. So let's try and see uh, maybe something well, what you would expect to be sold on the dark web markets. For example, can uh, let, let's try a very popular one, uh, cannabis. Let's search for gram search. By the way, talking about the interface, it is again uh, it has inspiration from Google. And uh, it has a very nice logo here, as you can see, basically giving you an idea of what it's all about, really. It's about basically the markets that, that deal with narcotics and stuff like that. Again, I don't, um, I don't encourage any of this or condone any of this, but again, it's up to you, uh, really, whatever you want to do. But anyway, uh, let's basically give that a search and let's see what it returns us. All right, so um, it's written an advanced search in and it gives you the amount of time it took to search. 
Um, it has some very cool uh, statistics here that I'll get to in a second. So basically, it's going to highlight um, it's going to highlight this, these two search results, which I'm guessing are sponsored, and it'll give you the vendor, the price in terms of Bitcoin, and the location in which you can in which this thing, uh, this company or vendor is located. So 25 bottles of canazine i'm really not going to click on any of these links because that's not the focus of this video but you basically get the idea all right so grams is a is basically a dark web uh a market uh, search engine and you basically get the idea you can search for anything on the dark web markets pretty cool uh, the last search engine uh in my in in this video is going to be torch and uh, I, we, I, we, we basically took a very brief look at Torch in the previous video. Torch is, a, is as simple as it gets, all right? So basically it has these weird uh, links over here, the Tor warehouse and basically what, what I, uh, they basically look like advertisements here. So it's going to say hacking services and really if you want to click on these links, it's, the, it's up to you really. So again, let's search for conspiracy theory. All right, let's give that a search and uh, it's uh, returned a conspiracy theory uh, right here called the chemtrail conspiracy theory. I don't know whether you guys are fans of conspiracy theories, but uh, this is a very popular one. Most probably it's going to be um, it's going to be from. All right. So there we are. As you can see, this is what I'm talking about uh, search engine. And this is why I really don't like uh, Torch, because even though it has a good, uh, fairly good user interface um you can basically uh sort it by the last modified date which we, we can actually try right now and see if the results that it gives us are good in any way and as you can see we clicked on this link and it told us that it does not exist so again it's all about whether or not a search engine can give you what you're looking for in my opinion amia is the best search engine and i would recommend it to you Again, the links will be in the resources folder attached to this section. So that's basically it for this video, guys. I hope you guys found value in this video. Thanks so much for watching. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the best email providers on the deep web or the dark net, as it's so called. So uh, there are about four um, email providers that I think will perform exceptionally well for, F, for really any purpose you have in mind. And... Uh, Basically, you might be asking yourself, why do I need an email address on the dark net or the deep web? Well, the question is, why not? Why shouldn't you have one? First of all, it's just it's amazing for communication because it's going to be anonymous and there's literally no tracking whatsoever. There's no Google Analytics tr tracking, basically tracking how many emails you send a day or no, nor is there basically file scanning on uh, basically attached files that you could be scanning. But th those are just some of the advantages of using an email on uh, the deep web or the dark net. So let's actually get started. Uh, by the way, the links will be in the resources folder for each of these videos that uh, actually contain links. So um, basically the first one is called Proton Mail. Now Proton Mail is also on the clear web, but it's ex it does exceptionally well on the deep web or the dark net as well. So here it is, and you can basically just log in or create an account. Now, uh, you might be asking yourself, why should I select uh, Proton Mail? Well, basically, as you can already see, it's uh, it's uh, gone to the clear web sign up. And uh, if we basically just temporarily allow scripts on this site, uh, it should. Uh, this is already on the clear web, so there's really no risk. You can select your account type. Uh, some of its um, packages uh, do need a payment. Now, there's the free version, which is a basic account with limited features. Uh, the secure email with advanced features basically has these advantages right here, up to a thousand messages a day. And you might be asking yourself, well, why can't I just use normal email for my communication? Well, that's also a good, uh, that's a good um, argument, but with ProtonMail, uh, as it says, ProtonMail is a free service for the public good. You can support online privacy by selecting a paid account. Your contribution helps us um, uh, basically develop ProtonMail as a free and open source software. So basically the packages, the payment uh, packages are just uh, to support them in development. Now you might be asking yourself, what security do they use? And they use end-to-end -end encryption. So that basically on, it on, on its own is uh, the best. And you can go through all of this 
really uh, you can basically have have a look at how it works and why they basically uh, why you should sign up with them but that's basically it for proton mail i won't get uh, into too deep into that again it's all about personal preference you can basically make your decision out of uh, proton mail and the others that we're going to be looking at the second one is tor box the tor mailbox now this is more in line with what i would use and basically if we go to the welcome menu uh, it's going to say welcome to tor box this is a hidden mailbox service only accessible from tor so there's no clear web version there is no connection between Torbox and the public internet. All messages are sent and received with Torbox. All right, so just sign up for a new Torbox uh, and start sending and receiving email within Tor. All right, pretty, pretty cool. So you can uh, you can basically just sign up for an account right here and it is free. So you can basically enter your nickname, your email address and name, password and capture and basically add your mailbox. Might be asking yourself, why is this so cool? Well. For me, I've used a tour box before. I just love its simplicity. It's really easy to create. It's a, an account and it's the, the mailbox is very simple. You can give people your email address over the deep web and you can communicate through them. And I might be asking yourself, what type of security do they use? Well, basically, uh, uh, this is the standard email system. Communications between you and the server and the server to MTA transport are encrypted as they established within the Tor network. So basically, your messages are already encrypted uh, because they are traveling through the Tor relay. Uh, basically, what it offers you is a mailbox and an email address and a webmail access through Squirrel Mail. So pretty, pretty good uh, package and it's free, absolutely free. So this is uh, one of my personal favorites. I, I would actually recommend this for beginners. The next one is BitMessage. Now, BitMessage has been there for quite a while now and uh, very, 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 very simple website. I think this is done in basic HTML. You can basically register, you can set up FAQ, uh, frequently asked questions. And uh, basi basically what BitMessage is, is a gateway um, that will basically uh, to connect BitMessage with an email without the need of any software. So it allows you the bit message network uh, the same way you use email today. So it's completely free, no advertisements anywhere, no tracking. So all of these really, really good features. Uh, in terms of registration, you have your setup guide right here, which uh, we will look at briefly. So basically this website uses JavaScript to protect email addresses. If you read this text, you have JavaScript disabled. In this case, replace all um, hashes with a at a document blah 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 so this is really just an advanced um, bit message email uh, client really advanced I would okay it, it's a very good service but uh, I would not recommend this for beginners and really this is something you would get into um, when you when you're moving into like um, when you're using many email addresses for example you create a website on the deep web and you want to use uh, many email addresses this is the service you would use because it's more of a mail gateway now the last one which is also a very good one is um, mail to tor all right now mail to tor has a very good website so it's an anonymous email service provider is a free anonymous email service to protect your privacy, all right? So it allows anyone to send and receive mail anonymously via webmail or email client. You will need to have the Tor browser installed on your computer to access mail to Tor. So it only works on the on the deep web or the dark net. Now, um, it's a very, very simple website and you basically just go about it by registering for an account. It's a bit of a slow website, but uh, it's a very good service nonetheless. So again, very, very simple registration, username, password, confirm your password. It has a capture and you can submit your query. You can then log in and then access your uh, your mailbox and send and receive email addresses, uh, um, email uh, emails, really not email addresses. So that's basically it for this video, guys. These are the basically, I think, the best email providers on the deep web right now. And hopefully you can find one that you like and one that you will hopefully be using for a long time to come. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hello, everyone. And today we're going to be basically looking at, uh, I think, in my opinion, the best social networks and forums on the deep web or the dark net, as it's so called. So um, I have uh, here a list of uh, some of these sites that I think are the best. And uh, by the way, the links uh, to these websites or these onion sites will be uh, in the resources folder 
under this lecture so uh, feel free to check them out the first one is galaxy 2 and i think in my opinion the most uh, i think the most the best um, basically forum slash social network uh, on, on the dark net or the deep web and basically you have uh, yeah, you basically have an activity section you can log in or create an account as you can see over here you can um, uh, you can register create an account um, uh, overall it's a very very clean um, social network in the sense that it doesn't can contain any malicious or uh, really disturbing um, content uh, you then have uh, the latest activity of the wire and this basically as you can see right here uh, you have uh, basically wire posts which are just like status updates or questions that people would ask you then have groups all right so you can form a group once you log in and you can you, as you can see uh, basically uh, right over here as you can basically see you have uh, you have different groups that are discussing different things and that's basically that uh, you then have um let me just open these yeah, let me just reload the page you then have blogs you have rules you have frequently asked questions so really it has a lot of people uh, on it and uh, it's a really really good social network slash forum so please do check it out uh, the next one is going to be chat tour now chat tour is basically a chat room and the reason i've included it is because you're absolutely anonymous and all you have to do is just enter a random name so i'm just gonna enter um I'm just going to enter mine as um, Peter Peter Griffin and I'm going to just join the lobby and uh, it's going to basically uh, open a lobby up and uh, you can basically start chatting whatever you want with these random people. So overall, pretty, pretty cool. Um, the next one we're going to look at is um, Facebook. Uh, believe it or not, Facebook actually has their own onion website dot onion website and they basically claim that they are not uh, they don't log your activity uh, when you use it uh, with the, when you use it on the tor network um, i i wouldn't i wouldn't go by their word because they they don't have it in their in their terms of use because they really haven't um, it really isn't supported uh, all that much when it comes to the deep web so yeah be, if you want to check it out go ahead again just run this at your own risk all right, and uh, the last one is the Intel Exchange, which I did promise that I would uh, give you guys uh, basically an overview of in the previous video. And Intel Exchange is a basically a forum where you can uh, discuss different types of stuff. And I really, really enjoy this. You can create an account and uh, you can log in. And the reason I like it is because it has uh, it has a, a very good. It's basically organized very well. Uh, it's very simple. For example, you have sections like suppressed technology. And uh, with suppressed technology, you can basically check out stuff like free energy, uh, the zero point or anti-gravity -gra documentary, really interesting stuff that deals with the um, science sector and technology. So overall, pretty, pretty awesome. So that's basically it for this guy, uh, for this video, guys. Uh